Welcome everyone. In this video I'm going to show you the recent updates of my uh, Tensai testing machine. So as you can see that uh, the structure is quite new. So as compared to the previous part where I was using these extruded aluminium profiles, now I'm using a huge 6 mm thick uh, steel plate it's cut by laser and then I designed all the holes and everything in a CAD software in Fusion 360 and then uh, ordered it on the internet so everything is good within the tolerances and everything so the holes are uh, good, good enough. So let's talk about the parts. So let's start with the motor. Uh, previously I was using a very small uh, stepper motor which you can see here in the corner. So basically this small guy, this is a NEMA 17 and uh, you can see that this is like 1 to 51 gear ratio and if you just uh, compare the size with this big guy here you can see that there is a significant difference I mean if you see just the diameter of the planetary gear so it's a quite big difference and uh, it's a big difference in uh, torque so now at this moment I'm using a NEMA 20 3 motor with a 1 to 15 uh, gear ratio so because since since the torque uh, of this motor is considerably larger than the torque of the smaller motor then I'm able to use a bit uh, smaller uh, transmission or planetary gear therefore I have uh, higher speeds at, at the output here so I can drive the lead screws with a much higher speed. Actually, it's like more than three times uh, quicker or faster, which is which is a good thing. So once we left the shaft of the motor, there is a small uh, belt here. So basically one to one uh, gear ratio here and then we have a eight millimeter shaft which has two uh, worm gears here and uh, they are connected to two two worm wheels the gear ratio of this uh, transmission is like one to twenty and then uh, there are two bk10 uh, support bearings and you can see that i have like two steel collars here and uh, I made a small grinding on the surface of the lead screw so there is a flat part where the screws in the collars can make a good and firm contact with the surface of the lead screw so they will not slide this is because of the forces which can appear if I use different types of uh, screws so there can be an axial force and I want it to stop the lead screw from moving in this direction so along the axis of the lead screw so this is all and then we, we arrive at the crucial part so these are like these two guys here are the cross heads and uh, you can see that the grips are connected to the cross heads and then here is the load cell. I made this fancy cable for the load cell and also the fancy cable for the motor as well. It looks better and uh, the cable is more organized and uh, I also have better contacts. So what you can see here that I have two small aluminium plates and now actually there is a specimen here. I just uh, 3D printed some 
a small plastic specimen and I just tested the device and it works fine so far and uh, at the end there are there are two pillow bearings so nothing special what is a drawback of this uh, setup at this moment that uh, there is a gap between the bottom of these bearings here here so I filled up that gap by cutting different uh, aluminum plates and also I put some washers in between the bottom of the bearings and the surface of uh, this plate and uh, it's not a nice and not a rigid uh, solution at all but uh, the, the ultimate, ultimate solution will be to have someone to machine some parts for me so basically what I need here is a small aluminium plate with eight holes, so four four, with the with the desired uh, dimensions, and then uh, I just simply put there as a spacer or washer, and uh, the same here. But uh, since the distance between the middle of the bearing and the bottom of the bearing is different for this kind of uh, support bearing and this kind of uh, pillow bearing. I have to have uh, different uh, heights uh, for these uh, spacers, but uh, that will be solved soon. Also, I made some mistake with the corners, so these are very sharp corners and I did not make it round as the inside of this part. So in the next iteration I have to do that and actually this uh, hole here is the handle of this wall machine because this is quite heavy. Uh, the plate is like more than three kilograms the motor is more than two kilograms and uh, most of the parts are made of steel so this is this exactly the same steel so the same uh, material as this and uh, we have these bearing blocks four of them they are also heavy so the wall device is almost like or it maybe even reaches the 10 kilogram so 10 kilograms for this, so it's quite heavy. And then, uh, what else should I say? So, you see that uh, there is like four, four centimeters in both directions. So in total, you can have like eight centimeters of elongation for this small type of specimen, or you can have uh, like longer specimen, but uh, you have to have limited uh, elongation. So you have to consider how long you can go. And now the device is connected uh, to an Arduino. You can see it here in the corner. I try to put it in the picture. So here, I'm oh, sorry for this. So now it's uh, just wired up with an Arduino and a stepper motor driver. And then the cable goes here, ends up in the motor. So I can run it. But uh, the ultimate solution will be this. So what you can see here is the final uh, package for the control circuit, or almost final. So we have the main board here, an Arduino, which communic communicates with another Arduino. This is an Arduino Uno, and this is an Arduino Nano. So the Arduino Nano will communicate with the Uno. It will receive the commands for the stepper motor and uh, it will control the stepper motor. So the Arduino Nano is co connected to this uh, stepper motor driver and then uh, the output is here. So we have these plugs here. And uh, that's all. And I made this because I have to take care of two other uh, circuits. One circuit is here. This is an HX711 uh, circuit to read the, the load cell. So this is in, in principle, this is a 24-bit AD converter. So you can read very fine changes in the voltage and that's what the load cell does. So you just basically uh, have some change in the uh, gauge, which is inside the load cell. And that uh, gauge is basically a resistor bridge. 
So if you change the dimensions of that uh, gauge, then you will change the voltage, uh, the output voltage of that gauge, and that's what you read with this. So that is uh, connected to the main Arduino. And also there will be another uh, stuff that will be placed in this empty area. It's a bit smaller, 16-bit uh, AD converter that will do the work for the displacement measurement because I will create a small device uh, which is basically a linear potentiometer and I will use that to measure the displacement of the crossheads. So it will measure the displacement either uh, between the crossheads or between the grips. I still have to design uh, the connections and everything, the mechanical and everything, but uh, I already have the electrical connections, so this will be like a plus minus and output for the potentiometer, the three stuff here, and then uh, the four wires uh, for the stepper motor, of course, it has two coils, plus and minus uh, polarity for both uh, coils, and then uh, the five plugs, they are for the load cell, so it's, uh, I don't know if it's visible, but uh, you have plus minus uh, for the input and output, and of course you have the shielding of the cable, so that's why we have five. And then uh, they are already connected, and this box works, but uh, it's more simple to just directly drive the motor, and then uh, that's why I use just a separate circuit, which is which is here in the corner of the image. So that works nicely. So what I wanted to show you here is basically the new structure. So I will use a stronger motor, but uh, not to reach higher uh, forces between the cross heads but uh, to reach higher speeds. But of course I can do the other way around. So if I need higher torque to be able to put larger specimens here, then I can do that. Because actually at this moment uh, I am more limited by the capacity of the load cell, which is half tons or 500 kilograms, than uh, limited by the uh, drivetrain. So these things are capable of reaching more than the load cell. Actually, I could uh, saturate the load cell very easily. So, first, before I attached the grips, I just uh, connected the two cross heads uh, with the load cell, and then I measured uh, the capacity basically. So, how much I can go up in uh, force and uh, I could easily reach the 500 kilograms with this with this small guy here. So I did not even need this guy to reach 500 kilograms but then I, I made some calculations and this guy is more stronger so I can go higher and also the uh, structure allows to go about uh, one ton or two tons even, so that's that's not a problem. And uh, I will do that later as well. So you can see that there is a small space here, so I will use that space to uh, install the displacement sensor there. That will be the next uh, project or the next uh, iteration for this machine. And uh, for the last iteration, I will have the spacers for the bearings, I will have a new plate which will have uh, rounded edges or rounded corners and also I will need to make a new cut for the mounting bracket for this uh, motor because now it's only fixed to one rail and not to two rails because the you can see these two lines here, they are originally designed for the small motor, so for this. And this guy has 
uh, somewhat uh, narrower uh, bracket so so this uh, piece of steel so therefore the distance between these uh, holes are different for the small and the large motor but uh, all the other parts are all the other parts are okay and uh, everything runs smoothly so I think I will show some experiments later on so see you in the next video